In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to construct this beautiful watercolor paper bracelet. The bracelet is a uniquely original and beautiful jewelry object to make. What I particularly like about this bracelet is it's made up of individual unit forms that are interconnected with, in this case, leather, or you could use a nice jewelry cord. And because of this flexible interconnection of parts, the bracelet is easily sized to fit any wrist. In the, the example that you see here is a bracelet that I constructed at one of my live workshops. And I chose a simple rectangular shape for my unit forms, which I happen to like a lot. I often make jewelry using this shape. But there is absolutely no limit to the design possibilities that you can incorporate into this bracelet. And these can take on very unique, interesting, organic or, or rectilinear shapes. And I encourage my students when they're designing this bracelet to look at nature or to look at art. Uh, look at the shapes of flowers and derive your ideas from these external sources. These external sources can provide rich, inspirational raw material to build upon. The clasping mechanism is very simple. For this bracelet, I used a rather thick shish kebab stick. And I cut it to size. It's about an inch and a half long. I drilled two holes in it that enabled me to pass the cord through it. And then I simply tied it on either end and used some crazy glue to glue it in place. The materials that I use to construct the bracelet are the same as we use in the watercolor paper pendant. Let's get started. I will now guide you step by step in the construction process of this unique bracelet. And the first thing I'd like to point out is the segmented nature of the bracelet. Notice that the unit forms are attached with a flexible cord. When I originally pointed out that I used the shish kebab stick here, I mentioned that it was glued in place. What I meant is the knots that I tied at the end of the cord have been glued with crazy glue but the shish kebab stick itself is not glued see and notice how beautifully it works and it's not going to come off wonderful solution all my ideas start in my sketchbook There we go. And this was a, a rough little drawer and I did. And I thought it would be a nice form to work into a bracelet. Or a pendant for that matter. You have already watched my video on how to construct a watercolor paper pendant. Be aware that the next step in forming the bracelet is identical to what you did in the pendant. That is, you have to cut out the individual shapes and glue them together to make the thick piece finish it off and here you'll be finishing each one off individually by sanding the edges and then working into the shape a conduit so you can insert the cord for the next step what I did is I redrew this shape on my watercolor paper and then I proceeded to cut out the individual shapes. And you have a lot of cutting to do. As you can see here, this was the paper I used to build this necklace right over here. Each unit should be three layers thick before building the back layers that will accommodate the leather. 
always cut on a self-healing board. When you cut with your X-Acto knife, keep your other hand away from the blade's edge. And what I like to do when I cut the pieces is I move the paper around like so. And keep the cutting blade relatively stationary. Well, I'm finished cutting out the pieces. As I indicated, the top part before. I create the channel for the cord is going to be three layers thick. We have five sections and we have three layers high each for five sections. The next step is to glue this together and then put it aside to dry. And one other thing I do when I glue it. I like to, after it has been glued, bend it on a curved surface. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use this two and a half inch diameter length of pipe. It gives it a nice curve that responds perfectly for the wrist. To continue with our development of the bracelet, I now have to glue the individual pieces of paper together to make the units. I've placed my paper on a piece of paper towel. And have applied a fairly thick wad of glue. And spread the glue out with your paintbrush or whatever, your fingers. Position the second piece. Apply more glue. I hold it down with something. It could be anything. Here I have this fancy tool. Or we can use this piece of chopstick. It doesn't really matter. I just find it easier to hold it with something rather than using your fingers. I like to avoid getting completely covered with glue. Now I'll take my third piece, and without the addition of any more glue right now, I throw my brush in water. Keeps the, the brush hairs really nice. You don't want the glue to start to harden up. Having done that, now I'll fold it over. and press it onto that pipe for about a minute or so. Work it down. Before too much time has elapsed, I'll lift up the paper carefully, because I don't want to separate the layers, just to make sure it's not gluing to the paper towel. And I'll lift it off the paper towel move it to a clean spot. Then continue to work it. Or even with my chopstick, I could burnish it. I want to make certain that all of the layers of paper are laying flat. And here's what I mean. I study the edge carefully to assure myself that no separation is taking place because that, that would ruin it. And, and what I'll do is I'll work it like this for a couple of minutes. Then 
when I'm certain that adhesion, 100% adhesion has been successful, I'll put it on the side to dry. Okay. Has that nice curve. The curve will help it respond to the wrist nicely. It's time to put it aside, let it dry, and move on to gluing up the next piece. Step one of the gluing is finished. Each is three layers thick, and I'm going to put them aside now. Forget about them for about an hour or so. Step two will be the building up of the back layer and preparing it in such a way as to accommodate the channel. How will I go about building the channel that you see here that allows the cord to pass through? I use something called the lost wax method, which is based on traditional jewelry, only now I'm using it with paper instead of using it to do metal castings. And what I do is I'll position a piece of wax precisely located where I want the channel to be, and then I'll glue paper over that. When all is finished, I simply put it in the toaster oven, and at 200 degrees, the wax melts out. An alternative to purchasing wax at a jewelry supply shop, specifically made for working with jewelry, I recently discovered that you can use these birthday candles for this purpose, readily available in, in the supermarket, and they happen to be the perfect size. They're thin. They're very thin designer candles. Go out and get some. It's an excellent solution for creating the wax channel. The individual pieces are now completely dry, very hard. As you can see, at this stage, it's very rough. It's a piece of raw material, and there's all kinds of irregularities on the edge. Something that I'll sand out. I use 120 grit sandpaper for this purpose and work the edge. My students in my live class often panic at this stage and they go, what are we going to do? I tell them it's paper. It's very simple now. We just sand away. I'll sand all five pieces until I'm happy with the degree of finishness. And then we'll move on to the next step, which is preparing the backs of all the pieces for the channel. I've cleaned these all up nicely. Let's move on to the next step. I would just like to point out that each unit shape, these are actually a little smaller. These are two inches. It just so happens that I made each one of these two and a half inches. And I would like to position the cord at about the half inch mark from each edge. So I've lined this up on my cutting board. The cutting board happens to be ruled out, so it makes it very convenient for gauging where I'll apply the wax to create the channel for the cord. That's my half inch mark right there on the cutting board. I will take my ruler, place it across all of them. there. Good. I strongly recommend that when you sand, you also wear a dust mask to protect yourself. I have it indicated where I will eventually need to place the wax for the channel. 
I need to cut out a bunch more of these pieces. I think the backs should each be two layers thick. That'll make a nice substantial unit form that will resist wear damage. I've cut out enough sheets of watercolor paper to form the back of the bracelet. And in order to create the channel, I will sandwich a piece of wax under the paper that I'm gluing. I'm going to pre-cut my wax pieces, and I'll need, I have five, two per piece, so I'm going to need ten. It's critically important that the wax stick out. Yeah, create some contrast beyond the piece. Why? Because as you varnish the piece, if the wax didn't stick out, you would seal it over with varnish, and it might be difficult to melt it out when you want to have it removed. So I always encourage my students to provide themselves with a little excess. This is professional jeweler's wax that I purchased and usually use for this purpose. But since it's so easy to get this in a supermarket, I thought you'd be happy to use this alternative rather than buy the much more expensive jewelry wax. What do we do? I'm going to apply glue to the piece. I'm also going to apply glue to the individual piece of watercolor paper that I'm going to glue to the back of this. I do this not only to give it a second layer of glue, but to dampen the paper a bit and make it more soft. This way it responds nicely to the shape of the, the wax that will be underneath. Position my candle. Things may move around a bit, but that's okay. Try to keep keep the wax positioned relatively close to that half inch mark. You know, I'm going to dampen the back a little bit just to soften it up. It'll take a little a little work. The paper is going to resist forming over the wax initially because it's not soft. But eventually, within a matter of a minute, it'll work its way down. Now before I get too involved with finessing this and working it down, I'm going to apply my second piece. Very good. Take a piece of watercolor paper. And begin to work it. What I'll do is cover it. See, now I'm working it with my fingernail until it begins to grab. It's beginning to grab and I'll I'll continue to work it till I'm certain that nothing is going to lift this is called burnishing and I like to do this because it enables me to achieve a nice contact between layers. What I'm doing here will need to be done for each 
unit form that composes your bracelet. And this is how I establish the conduit that will eventually allow the cord to pass through. I'd like to mention one thing at this stage. I used for the back 140 pound watercolor paper, the same paper that I used on a surface. This is going to result in a unit form that is very substantive. It's going to be a nice chunk of a piece. Of course, when this is dry, I have to sand and work out these irregularities just like we did for the top part. You can use a lighter weight paper for the back if you choose. A 70 pound drawing paper would work just as well and be a lot easier to form to the wax. So you may want to consider that. After the back is varnished, it's as durable as if you used 140 pound watercolor paper. Now that I've completed preparing all the backs of the bracelet, using my 120 grit sandpaper. I'm going to work away. And maybe with these what I could do is I could just trim them down. They do have a cord in in the center, so you'll probably have to cut them. For the backs, I usually use the same decorative paper approach that I employ in the pendants. Before I glue the top piece of watercolor to the unit forms. I will apply my decorative back paper. And to do this, I rough cut the paper. I don't worry about being too careful. Having rough cut it, I'll simply glue it in place, work it down, and then sand off the edges. I applied glue to the back. I'm spurning it around make sure it's evenly coated. Apply my banana paper. And what I'll do is fold over the paper towel. And rub everything in place, working down the banana paper. Excellent. I'll put it aside. I'll do this to the remaining pieces, and then we're ready to address the top. We're moving into the final stages of the development of the basic unit forms that will be assembled to compose the bracelet. You just saw me glue in place the back paper. I use the banana paper for this purpose. You can also use rice paper. It's a very nice, beautiful paper that responds well to watercolor paint. And now that everything is dry, the glue is thoroughly dry, I can clean up the pieces and prepare them for the top painted layer. To remove the excess, it's simply a matter of taking your sandpaper and holding the sandpaper on an angle. I work it this way. You can also take that sandpaper and wrap it around something. I'm using a chopstick in this case. That could work more effectively than just holding the paper. Of course, a file could also be used to clean off the edge. That is really nice. The unit form has the backing paper in place, the wax, will be melted out eventually, creating an opening that our leather will pass through. All five unit forms that are going to make up this bracelet 
are completed. The backing paper has been glued in place. The edges are sanded nicely. The channels will eventually be melted out. I still have to apply the watercolor paper to the top. And you know what I'm talking about. You've seen me do it in previous videos. Actually, there's a lot of nice stuff going on the scrap paper I have laying around. I could use that. Or maybe I'll create a new piece. Painted specifically for this new bracelet. I like that idea. The next video will detail the painting process and the finishing touches that include stringing the bracelet together. I hope you enjoyed watching part one on how to make a watercolor paper bracelet. And part two will guide you through the completion of this process. Thanks for watching.